गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्कार जय श्री कृष्ण इंडो अमेरिकन सीनियर सीटिजन सेंटर ऑफ न्यूयॉर्क न रजत जयंती वर्ष में एट हजार एक वर्ष में आपो आगनीसमो कार्यक्रम आज गुरुवार बब्बे कार्यक्रमों गणी तो छवीसमो सत्यावीसमो कार्यक्रम आज थे आ आप नवमो वीक है नवमा वीक में सत्यावीस कार्यक्रम एट अठवाडिये त्र कार्यक्रमों थे क्वॉलिटी वैविध्य भरपूर आई एम श्योर के वी आर ऑल हेप्पी एंड वेरी प्राउड ऑफ दीस टाइप ऑफ प्रोग्रामिंग विच इज पर नो अदर इंस्टिट्यूट इज डूंग अपने घना वक्त फाइनांस ने लगता विषय ने स्पर्श कर आज एक प्रखर वक्ता आ सब्जेक्ट निष्णात एवं श्री सलील भाई झवेरी इन्स्योरस डिजेबिलिटी इन्स्योरस लॉन्ग टर्म केर एस्टेट प्लानिंग रिटायरमेंट प्लानिंग जेवा सौ ने स्पर्शता विषयों साथ एक वार्तालाप आपसे पीछे प्रश्नोत्तरी कर आवा हेतुलक्षी कार्यक्रम पी एंटरटेनमेंट ना हो तो कम चा एटले अपने जेन कार्यक्रम पास एक बार मान चुक्या सुंदर गायक सारे गम पेशी बीट्स मणिक मल्होत्रा नो बॉलीवुड न विविध पचरंगी कार्यक्रमों एक गुलदस्त रजू थे अपने शुरुआत करूजल अपना अपनी प्रार्थना थी ए पी प्रमुख श्री न वक्तव्य वक्तव्य पी आप आ बने कार्यक्रम मणीश वे जरूरी महिति मेलवीश तो अपने प्रार्थना मे आज सौ पहला इन्वाइट करे कौशिक भाई निरूबेन हसोटी ने कौशिक भाई निरूबेन हे प्रभु आनंद ज्ञान हमको दीजिए शीतन सारे दुर्गणों को दूर हमसे कीजिए हे प्रभु आनंद दाता लीजिए हमको शरण में हम सदाचारी बने लीजियो हमको शरण में हम सदाचारी बने शांति चाहक धर्म राशक वेतवतारी बने हे प्रभु आनंद दाता प्रेम से हम गुरुजनों के नित्य ही से करे प्रेम से हम गुरुजनों के नित्य ही सेवा करे सत्य बोले झूठ त्यागे मेला आपस में करे हे प्रभु आनंद दाता निंदा किसी की, की हम किसी से भूल कर भी ना करे निंदा किसी की हम किसी से भूल कर भी ना करे दिव्य जीवन हो हमारा तेरा यश गाया करे हे प्रभु आनंद दाता हे प्रभु आनंद दाता हे प्रभु स्वागत उद्बोधन आज कार्यक्रम शुरुआत करें मुकुंद भाई मेहता थे 
and thank you Kaushik Bhai and uh, Niruben for a very pretty prayer. Good morning, friends, and I welcome you to Indo-American Senior Citizen Center of New York's usual weekly Thursday meeting. I hope all of you are doing fine. Today, we have very interesting subjects of finance. You may recall that in the past, we have uh, invited a few guests on this uh, subject. Uh, if you recall, Dev Gohil, also Paresh Shah, and others had come and address us on insurance, estate planning, disability, etc. Et uh, today's uh, speaker is Mr. Salil Zaveri. Uh, and uh, thereafter, there is a very interesting musical program by Manik Malhotra, who was uh, with us some time back, about two, three years back. Uh, before I call upon a uh, request of Mr. Javeri to come on the board, uh, Niranjan, can you see whether Mr. Sudhirbhai Vaishnav is on the Oh, Sudhirbhai. Uh, first of all, I have to, uh, as I told you, that uh, we request our members to suggest uh, if they can uh, refer some good speakers, because we have been running this uh, Thursday meeting ever since pandemic started. So for the last 50, 60 Thursdays, we have lots and lots of speakers and singers. So we now want some more new speakers. So I request all our members and other well-wishers to refer some good speakers. And Vishnu Bhai came forward. So, uh, sorry, Sudhir Bhai. Sudhir Vishnu. So Sudhir Bhai, thank you very much for your help. And I hope you will continue to do so in the future also. Tamar uh, Beshuddha Kevache. No, I have a second. Um, no, I'm fine. Salil, is, uh, the whole family has been a good friend and, and they are professionals in what they do. And I hopefully membership will benefit you know, from their expertise. So thank you. And I'll, I'll continue to bring some more speakers for the organization. Because you have a wide network, so we can always bank on you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you, uh, Sudhir Bhai. I really appreciate your presence here. Uh, today's speaker, as I said, is Mr. Salil Zaveri, uh, who has a very broad experience in the insurance business for more than 40 years. And uh, he had uh, experience with the Northwestern Mutual Life as well as with MetLife. And he was holding there the managerial positions. And uh, he had been an independent broker for more than 20 years. And now he's a CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Zaveri Consulting LLC. His education in the uh, insurance area is really great because uh, he has covered most of the aspects of insurance, you name it, and uh, he has covered that one. And uh, he has been on a speaker panel on a number of organizations. Uh, he renders uh, very good community services uh, with this uh, American Red Cross Society, as well as he's a Rotarian and a Rotary International he has been uh, holding uh, very good positions. He has been very active with them. And uh, he was assistant governor and also the president of a chapter. Now, without uh, much ado, I will request uh, Salil Bhai. Uh, welcome, Salil Bhai. And uh, just uh, give us a bit of your knowledge to us. Thank you very much. I appreciate your coming here. Salil Thank Bhai. You, Thank you, Mukan Bhai, uh, Sudhir Bhai, and your entire organization for welcoming today. Uh, welcoming me today. I'm so happy to be part of our beautiful Indian Gujarati community. Ilokani priority you know, to live in America and to make a better life and also to help India. So I've been shown those values by my father Ashok Zaveri and my mother Kala Zaveri. They were both in the business. My father from 1969 until 1988 when he passed away. And my mother also worked in the insurance business from 1972 till 1984 when she retired because of health reasons. And I joined my father in 1978, 42 years ago in the family insurance agency. At that time, we were agents and my father was manager at Northwestern Mutual. And then I went on to 
move from Northwestern Mutual to MetLife in 1988, 10 years after being at Northwestern. And after 10 years at MetLife in the capacity of agent and manager, I was a branch manager there. I was a district manager. I was general manager. And then I left MetLife in 1999 and I became independent in 1999. So since then, I have been independent. And two years ago, I am no longer acting as an agent or broker. I have a team of agents and brokers, uh, 70 agents and brokers throughout the United States. So now as Zavedi Consulting, which was a new company that started uh, five years ago, uh, what we do in Zaveri Consulting is we also help people plan their insurance using our 70 brokers throughout the United States who are all independent. And I'll explain why that's important, being independent. And Zaveri Consulting also helps business owners and professionals grow their sales and revenue. So my primary role is to help individuals like you who may be retired or planning on retirement and also your children who are working now uh, also help them with income growth because you as potential retired folks or retired folks want to maximize your money you worked hard unfortunately my father passed away in 1988 and was not able to enjoy you know living a long life because he was only 56 when he passed away. I'm 60 now. So as a 60 year old, I'm also thinking of hopefully having some years someday when I can retire and enjoy life as you are currently. But there's a challenge we all face. The challenge we face is when I started in the insurance business in 1978, 42 years ago, insurance companies were selling insurance plans to you to protect your family. Your thinking was if you die prematurely that you wanted to leave money for your children's colleges, you wanted to pay off your mortgages, you wanted to build some cash value that you can use at retirement. And that was the original plan of why you may have purchased your life insurance. And I'm gonna talk about different types of insurance. I'm gonna start with life insurance. Then I'm gonna talk about disability insurance. I'm gonna talk about long-term care. And at the end of this presentation, I'm hoping that all of you will be able to look at your policy in a little bit different way than you have in the past. You purchased it, you looked at it as, as, as an expense. You saw it as a necessity. But I'm actually gonna show you how now you can utilize those policies, not just for the original purpose that you had, the original purpose being paying off a mortgage. You may not have a mortgage today. You may have worked hard and paid it off. So that's not a need. You may not have that college requirement anymore because you already may have put your children through college. So now the question is, what are you gonna do with your life insurance policy? If the purpose is to keep it as life insurance, I'll show you a better way of actually stopping paying and getting all your death benefit now without dying. Because if you wait till death, that may be five, 10, 20, 30 years from now or longer. That means for the next five, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, you'll keep paying into that policy. And some of you may say, no, I'm not paying anymore. You know, the policy is taking care of itself. Well, it's not taking care of itself with air and water. It's taking care of itself with your money, your cash value, your dividends. So if there's a way to stop paying now or very near future, actually stop paying. I don't just mean out of your bank account. There is actually a way to stop paying altogether. And there is also a way to collect all the death benefit without dying. And you'll say, well, how can that be? So I'm gonna explain that. So if you wanna take notes, please do. And as I mentioned, uh, my team and I, we're independent. We're not gonna talk about any specific company. Uh, 
uh, we're not going to say this is good or that's good or this is bad or that's bad. We just want to provide you information, knowledge, knowledge whereby you can understand your own policies and how to maximize it and how to get more and not use up your own money as now you're going into your retirement mode. Because now we are living longer and longer than ever before. Aside from COVID, COVID is a temporary situation. But let me give you an example. When I started in 1978, people were expected to live until their 60s. So insurance companies would have told you in 1960, 70, 1980, 1990, 2000s, that your premium is, let's assume for a moment, that it's going to be $1,000 per year. It could be 10,000, it could be whatever your number actually is. But I'm using $1,000 as an example. And let's say your policy was $100,000. It could be a million, it could be 5 million. I'm just using a hypothetical. Salil bhai, tamaru mute say. Salil bhai, tamaru unmute karo. Salil bhai. Salil bhai, you are muted. Salil bhai. Salil bhai. Assumption of age 35. That you were 35 years old back then. Now what has happened? Since medicine, all of you who are doctors out there, thank you. And all of you who are nutritionists and other types of people who teach us how to live smarter and better and healthier. You have made it possible for us to live now into our 80s. Statistically, now people are living into their 80s, high 80s, instead of 60s. So what does that mean? It means that the insurance company can recalculate how much premium they need for the life insurance policy. So today, if somebody's 35 years old and they went out to buy a $100,000 policy, because they're going to live into their high 80s, the insurance company can now provide maybe $180,000 of death benefit for the same $1,000. So if you can get extra death benefit for the same money, what you can do, now let's look at it from your position. You already have a policy that you bought in the past. What can you do? Well, you can keep letting the insurance company collect that $1,000 from your cash value every year because you're not paying, but they need to get paid. So they're going to take your dividends or they're going to take your cash value. So you personally don't have to pay. Now, they're going to take the $1,000 from your internal policy and keep you insured for hypothetically $100,000. But if we went back to the insurance companies, not your company, your company doesn't care to give you a better deal. They're gonna give a better deal to new customers. You are an existing customer, so they don't value you as a uh, potential new customer. They say, you're paying a thousand, keep paying the thousand, we give you $100,000 coverage. But if we went to the marketplace, we went back and we shopped and said to the other companies, the competitors, and we said, our client has a $1,000 premium that's coming out of the cash value or dividends. They have a cash value, cash value meaning what you get if you want to withdraw from your cash value policy. Let's say your cash value is 50000 and your death benefit was 100,000. We can go to the marketplace and say that if our client were to come to you, what would you do for them? And each company will give us a different answer based on your health and based on your new age. One company may come back and say, we will give your client if they move that policy to us and that's called a 1035 exchange. So when you exchange a policy from one company to the other, there is no new commission involved to you. That $50,000 cash value moves from the old policy to the new policy without any taxation. 
and the new company will provide you not just 100,000 coverage, but they might give you $180,000 coverage. So your family ends up getting perhaps 80% more death benefit. So if you were then to pass away, die, after making the exchange, your family will get much more life insurance at no additional cost. And your cash value, which was 50,000 in the old company, will also be 50,000 in the new company. So you're not losing anything, you're gaining something. Let me give you a different example. Let's say in the old days, the banks used to compete for your CD, certificates of deposits. You remember those days, that's not happening anymore. But in the old days, if one bank was giving you 7% and the other bank offered you 9% and the new bank said, we'll give you 9% and we'll give you a toaster or a microwave or a refrigerator as a gift for moving, we moved in those days. We went from one bank to another bank. We moved our CD from here to here. We got the higher interest rate and we got the free gift, no loss. The same is possible with your life insurance policy by exchanging from the old company to the new company. Now, your agent won't tell you about this. Why? Why won't your agent tell you about this? Because your agent is getting a residual commission on you paying the $1,000 and giving only 100000 the company that your agent works for is going to discourage the agent by coming to you and saying that exchange the policy for the same money to get more. Now, how do they discourage the agent? The insurance company is going to discourage the agent by doing that because they don't want to give you extra 80% benefit. They want to collect from you the high premium for the lower benefit, even though they're charging new customers the lower premium because they take you for granted. They think they already have your money. They have you as a client. Why should they give you something extra? It's unfortunate, but this is how insurance companies think. They like premium. They love to collect premium. They're not happy paying claims. They pay because they have to, but they're not happy doing it. And they're even unhappier giving extra benefit to a previous customer. Let me give you another example. If you had a mortgage with a bank at 14% interest rate fixed, and the rates are now very low, they're three, four percent. That bank is not going to be happy coming to you and saying, Oh, we're charging new customers three, four percent, and you're paying 14%. Let me fix it for you. They're not going to fix it. They want you to pay 14% on your mortgage. Now, the broker may come to you and say, the bank has lowered the rate, let's refinance because the broker gets a commission for fixing. But in the insurance industry, that doesn't happen. The agent you're dealing with does not get compensated if they change the plan and give you more benefits. Let me give you an example. When I was at MetLife as a manager for 10 years, from 1988 to 1999, if an agent came back to us in the company and said, we have a client that can get more death benefits for the same premium, can we do the exchange for them? We would say, sure, go ahead and do it. Then the agent will come back and say, how come I didn't get commission for that? And we as a company would say, not me, I'm talking about the senior officer who set these rules in the companies, would have said, sorry, the 1000 premium was already commissioned to you in the past. Now you can only have the residual commission. And not only that, because you gave away 80% more benefit, we're gonna penalize you on your bonus. And the agent will say, why? Why am I getting penalized? I understand you're not gonna pay me commission again, but why am I getting penalized for giving somebody more benefit? And the company will say, will say that because you just reduce our profitability. If our profit goes down, we're not gonna compensate you the same as we used to. So the problem with the insurance industry is that the agents have gotten spoiled and this mentality of why should I fix people's policy if I'm gonna get hurt with my bonuses is not good. Agents have become spoiled 
they are starting to do things that are not right for the client. And so I left the insurance company system in 1999. I felt that the companies are manipulating us as agents and managers because they're controlling us with how they compensate us on our commission and our bonuses. So I felt if I became independent, I can do whatever I want. I can move people from one company to another and I don't get penalized and you don't get penalized. As an independent person, I do get hurt in many other ways. And that's why a lot of agents do not become independent. Let me give you the difference between an independent agent or broker, which is my team, and people who work for a company. For example, you may have an agent that works for AXA or Prudential or any other company. So what happens is when you work as an agent of a company is you get a free office, you get a retirement plan, you get health insurance subsidies, you get uh, vacations, you get 401k, you get a lot of benefits on top of your commission. And if you leave a company and you became independent, you only get commission. So I and my team, if we sell a policy today, we only get paid the basic commission. Whereas if we choose to work for a single company, we would get paid much more in many other ways. So agents don't use usually leave a company. They stay there. They stay there 20, 30, 40, 50 years until they retire. And then they get a pension from that company. And all along the way, they keep saying that their company is the best, always the best. Now think about that. Does that even sound logical? Many years ago, we had BlackBerry. I'm gonna use a different industry, industry to give you an example. Many years ago, not too far ago, but we had BlackBerry. And BlackBerry was the best for communicating for business purposes. Emails came right away. We were able to message to each other right away. And it was the most efficient way of communicating by telephone through a BlackBerry. Now, BlackBerry is not a player anymore. BlackBerry fell behind and iPhones created the same features that BlackBerry had and gave you even more features. Android gave you even new features. So competition is good. Companies compete and they keep getting better. They keep getting ahead of the other and they have to always compete to improve. Now, any company, no company can have a monopoly forever. So when an agent tells you forever, they're the best, they're the best, they're the best. They're telling you this because they want you to stay there. They want you to buy the policy from their company. And then they want you to keep buying more policies from the same company, even if other companies get better. And if they leave, they lose residuals and pension, like I did. I don't get anything from Northwestern Mutual. I used to be there 10 years. But by leaving them, I lost that residual and benefit. Same thing with MetLife. I was at MetLife for 10 years. By leaving them, I lost all of the value I had by being with them for 10 years. So 20 years of my 42 years, I don't get paid for today. But why did I make the move? I made the move because I'm looking out for the client first. By me letting you know that BlackBerry, for example, is no longer the best, now it's iPhone. Then it's Android. I'm letting you know what's really the fact. If you know the fact, then you can decide what you need to do. Same thing like cars. There was one car that was good at one time. There's another car that's good at another time. And I'm not talking about personal preference. I'm talking about what consumer reports will say is better than the other by comparing all the details of a product. So that's what I do. I compare contracts. So let's talk about what's different in companies. How is one company better than the other? How do you choose? How do you decide? So in life insurance, what you want to make sure that is your policy will have several benefits. There are several key features. Number one is what will the premium buy? If $1,000 is going to buy $100,000 at one company, then we want to see what that same $1,000 will buy. And I'm not talking about comparing term insurance to whole life or whole life to universal life, because those are different products with different features. 
I'm talking about apple to apple. If you're going to compare term, compare to the other company's terms. If you're going to compare whole life, compare the other company's whole life to the whole life you have. If you're comparing universal life, you have to compare the universal life. So let's just use some general features aside from the type of plan. In a life insurance policy for you, all of you who have a policy today, you can exchange it for several benefits. Number one, you can raise the death benefit for the same money. Same exact premium. If you're not paying any longer, the new company that you go to will also forgive all the premiums. They'll say, okay, you're not paying over there. You don't have to pay us. All you have to do is you have to exchange your coverage from there and move your cash value to us and we'll waive all the future premium, which is great. Now your old company will say, look, if you stay, you're gonna have 100,000 and you're not gonna pay, or you're gonna pay 1,000. The new company will say, if you move to us, we'll give you $180,000 death benefit and you don't have to pay or pay the same 1,000. And there's several other benefits. Number two, besides having more death benefit, number two, you can have something called long-term care benefits. Instead of buying a separate policy, instead of buying another long-term care policy, that life insurance policy will provide you long-term care benefits automatically if the plan is properly designed. Let me use an example. Let's say I have a million dollar life insurance policy. In that policy, if I tomorrow have a stroke, heart attack, sports injury, car accident, I fall down the stairs, hurt my back, all things that happen. I may not be disabled. I may have difficulty with balance. Let's use stroke as an example. If I have a stroke, I will have poor balance perhaps. And if I have poor balance, I may be unable to stand safely in the shower. So if I'm standing in the shower and the water is hitting my head, and I am feeling dizzy, I can fall, I can hurt myself. So the insurance company will say to me, Salil, your life insurance policy for a million dollars is going to pay when you die. You're 60 years old, you'll probably live to 80 or 90, but because you're suffering from poor health and have difficulty with balance, which affects your maybe bathing, it affects you going up and down stairs. You have the option to take that death benefit now while you're alive. All of it you can have on a monthly installment starting the fourth month of your illness. Now, I'm not disabled. I'm not bedridden. I'm not in a wheelchair. I just have difficulty with certain things. Difficulty with perhaps bathing, difficulty with going down the stairs, so the insurance company will say, Salil, we'll give you $12,000 every single month, tax-free, so your $1 million death benefit will be reduced by $12,000 every month. So $144,000 a year, if you take $12,000, multiply it by 12 months, you get $144,000, Salil, every month, annually one forty four dollars that you can have tax-free from your death benefit while you're alive. Not only that, you can stop paying us. We won't charge your policy from your cash value. We won't charge your policy from your dividends. We will not charge you at all. All premiums are waived. And then you're collecting your death benefit every month, $12,000 a month. So now what does that mean to Salil Zaveri? Salil Zaveri is gonna receive $144,000 a year tax-free without me hiring anybody. I don't have to go to a nursing home. I don't have to hire somebody to come to my house and help me with my bathing. Somebody else can help me. My family members can help me. How can they help me? They can stand an arm's length away from the shower when I am bathing. I will have the shower curtain closed. I will take my own shower. But if I fall, they'll call 911 or they may be able to help me get up. That is assisting me. As long as somebody's assisting me during my old age or my illness or car accident, sports injury, whatever, any reason whatsoever, that if I'm gonna suffer more than three months, 
the insurance company will pay me my death benefit starting the fourth month, 12,000 a month, 144,000 a year. And that amount is raised every year. Next year in 2022, the IRS is who sets these numbers. IRS may make it 12 and a half thousand a month. So right now it's 12,000 in 2021. So 144,000. So if you divide $144,000 into $1 million, which is my death benefit, which would have been paid to my family maybe when I die at age 80 and I'm 60, 20 years from now, instead of that, I can collect $144,000 per year, $12,000 a month over the next six and a half years. If you divide $1 million by $144,000, in less than seven years, I will receive me while I'm alive without any receipts, without living at a nursing home, without submitting any paperwork of bills that I paid a third party. I will receive that in less than seven years. So what do I do? First, I can take that 12,000 every month and live on it. If I don't need that money, I can bank it. I can invest it. I can keep it for my spouse. I can say, look, this million dollars was for you, honey. Instead of me waiting for 20 more years to leave it to you, when they will only give you the same million dollars, I got the million dollars now. Let's invest it for you. Let's put it into real estate. Let's put it into something in the stock market, whatever you prefer. And let's turn the million dollars into more. And maybe by the time I'm 80 years old, if I'm still alive, hypothetically, that million could become two, three, four million. So instead of the insurance company holding on to your death benefit, your policy, which is sitting in your drawer, you can take it out and say, hey, I don't like this policy. It's only going to pay if I die. And you're only giving me 100,000 when I can have 180,000. And your agent is not going to fix it. How can you fix it? You can call me. You can say, Salil, these are my policies. Take a look at it, shop it in the marketplace, and see if you can get a good offer from other companies for me to exchange so I can get more death benefits and these long-term care benefits whereby I don't have to keep paying into it out of my pocket or out of my policy. And also I can collect all the death benefits from my family now. Invest it, give it to my family now. I can give it to my kids now. I can give it to my spouse now. I can invest it for them and make it grow even more than the million dollars instead of waiting 20 more years when I actually die. So now instead of, here's your choice. Your choice is when you die, the insurance company is gonna send your family money on your old policy, your existing policy. When you die, they're gonna send the money 20 years from now probably. And they're gonna send this money and they're gonna give it to them and the value of it is much less because today a million is worth a lot more than 20 years from now, a million is not worth the same. So you're better off taking the death benefit now. A lot of people are making mistakes by surrendering these policies. They're saying, I don't need it anymore. I paid off my mortgage. My uh, kids are out of college. I don't need the life insurance. Give me the $50,000 cash value. And they're walking away from these policies. They're also selling these policies to some third-party companies who will then have the life insurance on your life. They'll give you maybe 50,000, 80,000, 100,000 now. And then when you die, they collect 100,000 or more. So instead of taking the less money, you can take the death benefit yourself. You get the money without dying. So this is how you can restructure your life insurance. Also, there are new features in life insurance such as in your old policy, if you take cash value out, you may have had to pay interest, 5% interest, 8% interest. Why pay interest on your own money? In the newer policies, you don't have to pay interest. You can withdraw the cash value. So suppose you make the exchange to a new company, we shop it for you, we get you more debt benefits, we get you the long-term care benefits whereby you can get the debt benefit yourself without any receipts, and then on top of that, even if you don't have long-term care symptoms, old age symptoms, injury symptoms, you can still take your cash value 
at 0% interest. Withdraw the money as you need it. It's your money. Take it out at 0%. So these are the multiple benefits of having newer products. My own policy, I've in 42 years, I've changed them seven times. Every time a better plan comes along, I do a 1035 exchange. Every time I move my policy from one company to another, as long as I can qualify for the requirements of the new company health-wise, and not everybody has to be in perfect health. Some people can have imperfect health, some issues with heart problems, other problems. And there are companies out there that will forgive that. They'll say, okay, we're okay with it. And other companies will say no. So it's good to compare. It's good to go out there and see what the companies out there, there's 1,500 insurance companies that we can go shop with. And we get exactly the same commission from every company. We don't have a personal bias. We're not going to say we love this company more than that company because we're getting paid more by one company over another company. We're not getting a retirement benefit from somebody. We're not getting a, you know, health insurance from any company. We're not getting any benefits from any company. We're getting paid exactly the same percentage by every company. So we can tell you honestly, we can say, look, here's your old policy. Here's what's available in the marketplace. Let's take a look at the comparison of what you can gain by moving the policy. So I've addressed life insurance. I help you. I hope you understood all the benefits of comparing, of taking it out of the drawer, giving me a call and saying, okay, here is what I have. Tell me what the differences are. Let's move to the next topic, disability insurance. Now, disability insurance does not work after age 65 unless you're working. Most people retire at 65. So let's assume you're a doctor or a dentist. Um, it's important to understand for those of you who are still working that if you have a disability policy, what does it mean? First, let me explain what it means. It means, let's say you are a doctor, let's say you're earning $200,000 a year. I'm just gonna use that as a number. It could be $2 million that you're making. But if you're making 200,000, and you cannot perform your job because of your health. So let's say that you injure your hand, you go to play volleyball and you jam your thumb. And because of that, now you cannot operate. You know, you cannot use your, you're a surgeon and you cannot operate on people because your thumb is jammed and you're now disabled, not physically on the rest of your body, but you're disabled as a doctor, as a surgeon. So the insurance company will say, look, doctor, we will pay you the income you're losing, not 100%. They're not going to give you $200,000 a year because they're going to be afraid as a company that you might hurt yourself and say, look, let me hurt myself. Then I can sit at home and get $200,000. No, they don't want that. They don't want to give you a reason to hurt yourself. So what they'll do is they'll penalize you a little bit. They'll say, instead of giving you 200,000, we will give you $120,000 a year. That's a maximum benefit that you can have. Now, some people think they can buy a policy in one company for 120, 120,000, and then another company for 120,000 and collect 240,000. No, that won't happen. Because on a claim, the two companies will see what each of them are paying you. So they don't want to overpay you. There's a central computer that all disability claims are processed through by all companies. So they can see each other who's paying you and they'll coordinate between the two. So if you bought two policies for 120,000 each, the two will talk to each other, the two companies and say, okay, they're not eligible for more than 120. So you pay 60, we'll pay 60 and we'll make sure they get their 120. So don't overbuy disability insurance, because if you overbuy it, you're not gonna collect anyway. You're just overpaying. They're not gonna refund you premium. So make sure you buy only the amount you're eligible for. And make sure you speak to qualified independent brokers who will go in the marketplace and get you the maximum benefit because the other side of the problem also exists. Let's say you're a doctor making $2 million a year. Now, the company that you went to speak to, your agent might come back and say, hey, my company's limit is $25,000 a month. 
of disability insurance for you. So now you think that's your limit. You will collect when you get disabled 25,000 a month, that's $300,000 a year, but you just lost $2 million a year by not working. So you don't wanna have that gap. You don't wanna have a gap of $1.7 million of ability to collect. So if you speak to someone independent like us, we will go to all the companies and say, look, he makes 2 million. How much do will you pay? 25,000? Fine. Then we'll go to another company and get another 25,000. And another company may have $30,000 limit. And we'll collect from different companies all the benefits to get you close to 1.2 million. Remember, we talked about getting 60% uh, of your income. You cannot have 100% because they don't want you to hurt yourself. And they will not uh, pay you too much, but you're eligible for 60% of what you're making. Now, the 60%, if you pay, this is very important, that if you have a disability policy, whether it's underinsured or the right amount, you know, make sure you do not deduct the premium. Many doctors, dentists, engineers, architects, CPAs, they have policies, but then they deduct the premium like a business expense. You don't want to do that on disability insurance. Because if you do that, here's what's gonna happen. Let's use that same example of somebody making 200,000. Now the 200,000 earner gets disabled and not physically disabled. We use the example of jamming the thumb. So he gets hurt and he can, cannot operate anymore. And so now he calls the insurance company through the broker and says that I'm hurt. I cannot perform my primary and principal duties. I'm not disabled physically, but I cannot do my duties. I can do other things. I can maybe teach. I can teach people how to perform surgery, but I cannot do it myself. You can collect. You can collect that disability benefit, even if you can earn income doing other things, provided you have a provision called own occupation. So it's important to have that provision. If an agent sold you a policy without the proper provisions, you're not gonna be able to collect if you don't have the right provisions on your policy. So it's important to design the plan properly, not just pay the premium and buy the base policy. Make sure all the extra provisions are set up properly. There are many options and you have to have the correct options so you're not overpaying and, and not have the wrong provisions so that you miss out on the benefits. But now, what happens if you deduct it to the premium, here's what will happen. That $200,000 earner calls a broker and says, tell your insurance company to pay me. So the insurance company will say, okay, number one, we'll send the money. So they'll send the $120,000, which is, uh, we talked about in this example, uh, $10,000 a month benefit. 10,000 makes 120, uh, 120,000 a year. So 10,000 every month tax free. So now you get the check in the mail. You know who's gonna come knocking on your door? The IRS. IRS is gonna say, oh, Mr. Beneficiary, you collected $10,000. We wanna have tax on it, income tax. We want New York state tax. We want federal tax. Why, you'll say. You'll say, why do I have to pay you benefit? This is my life insurance. I mean, my disability insurance. They'll say, but you deducted the premium. If you deducted the premium as a business expense, now we, you cannot get the benefit tax-free. You can only have it one way or the other. If you deducted the premium, then you have to pay tax on the benefit. So now if your premium was $1,000, I'm using the example, you got the deduction on the $1,000 every year, but now you're gonna pay tax on the 120,000 you're collecting every year which is terrible because you might've gotten maybe a $200 tax savings on the premium, but you're gonna pay tax on millions of dollars that you will collect in benefits later. So you don't want to deduct the wrong kind of plan because the penalty is gonna be paying income tax on the benefit. The benefit is always much bigger than the premium. So do not ever let anybody deduct, tell your accountant, Say, hey, I don't want you to deduct my disability insurance premium. And he'll say, oh, it's a business expense. Nope, don't do it. Do not deduct my disability insurance premium. 
because when I collect the benefit, I don't want to pay tax. That's the big amount. The premium is a small amount. Okay, so now we touched on disability insurance. We talked about not having too little. We talked about not having too much because if you have too much, they're not going to pay you anyway. They're going to coordinate through that central computer and you're going to only collect what you are eligible for. Now, let's talk about long-term care. We touched upon it a little bit through the life insurance. There's that benefit you can have at no cost. Well, there is a cost, a very small nominal cost. It usually costs about 5% of your life insurance premium. So 5 to 15% of your life insurance premium based on your health, your age. So if your premium was 1,000 for that life insurance, it might cost you 5% more. Maybe you'll pay 1,050. Maybe you might pay $1,150. So it's better to pay that little bit more and have the ability to collect all the death benefit. Remember the life insurance we talked about early without dying, without moving to a nursing home. Okay, so on the other side, there's a traditional long-term care. That's the policy that everybody knows about. I don't like that plan. I don't think it's a good plan. Most people out there who have long-term care, unfortunately have bought it already. And I wouldn't say cancel it, keep it. And we can supplement that for you with a better way to do long-term care. But how does the basic long-term care work? The traditional long-term care that you all may know about. So that is a plan that let's say you bought today, let's use today. Today, they don't give unlimited long-term care benefits. In the past, they used to give unlimited. You bought the plan, and then if you had illness, you had to move to a nursing home, or you had to hire somebody to come to your house and help you. Whatever that expense was, the long-term care insurance company paid it for you. Either paid it as a reimbursement to you, or they paid it for you directly to the vendor. Now, the problem with that plan, and the problem with the new plan, which is limited, limited to the amount you buy, you can buy a million, half a million, in the old days, it was unlimited. But the traditional long-term care plan is a reimbursement plan. What does that mean? In that first example, we said you receive a check for 12,000 every month. You can keep it. You didn't spend any money, but you can keep it. Invest it. You know, do whatever you want with it. No receipt. The old traditional long-term care plan and today's traditional long-term care plan will not send you the money of 12,000. They'll say, okay, Mr. Client, how much did you give to the person who visited your home to help you while you were bathing or going up and down stairs? And you might say they used to come every day for two hours and uh, we paid $70 a day. So now the insurance company at the end of the month, end of the month will total all your receipts, $70 times, let's say you did it 30 times, 30 days a month. Every day you wanted to take a bath, get cleaned, and you call the third party licensed agency, it has to be a third party licensed agency, it cannot be a family member. So now third party licensed agency came over and you paid them $70 a day times 30 days, $2,100. They will not send you $12,000, they'll send you $2,100 because that's what you spent. That's what your receipts were. So now you get $2,100 so that your out-of-pocket cost became zero. But you didn't get to keep any money. You didn't get to invest in the market. You didn't get to do anything else with that money. It was only to make you end up with a zero cost. Now, so number one, it's a big difference. What I talked about having it on your life insurance where you get cash to keep. You get to keep it, do with it what you want, tax-free. This money that traditional long-term care plan comes only as a reimbursement, similar to your health insurance. You have a health insurance plan, Medicare, Medicaid, or a private plan. That's a health plan that pays a doctor. You don't get money. They pay the hospital, they pay the doctor. You don't end up with anything to keep. It's only to pay somebody else. So my suggestion is, that if you have not purchased long-term care insurance of any kind, instead of buying the traditional long-term care plan, 
which is only reimbursement plan, and you end up with no money. And only certain things are eligible, like third party person coming to help you. Traditional long-term care plan will not pay you for your groceries. It will not pay you for your gasoline. It will not pay for your utilities. It will not pay for almost anything except somebody coming to your house to help you. That's licensed to help you. Or you move to a nursing home. That's it. That's all it does. Traditional long-term care plan. So I would suggest you get one, but not this time. Instead, we can give you, if you don't have any life insurance that we can fix, because remember I said earlier, we can fix your existing life insurance at no cost to you and include this benefit, long-term care benefit, whereby you get cash in your old age or illness. But if you don't have that traditional long uh, life insurance, now you have a choice. You can spend your own money and spend it down. So what's the problem? Problem is we're gonna live longer and longer. So let's say you have a million dollars sitting in the bank and you think that's enough to live going forward. The value of that million will not last forever. You're gonna be spending it, spending it, spending it every year. And then eventually it's gonna become zero. So the value will become less and less and less. At one point, maybe when you're 10 years from now, you'll run out of money. You don't wanna run out of your own money. So my suggestion is have a plan from an insurance company that pays you $12,000 a month cash, tax-free, without hiring anybody, so that you can raise your million dollars to become $2 million in value. Now you made your $1 million worth $2 million that you get to use without dying. See, this is a different need. Your old need when you're 35 years old, that million might have been to pay for the mortgage and the college for the children and so on. That's gone. Your need today is to have expenses paid without using your own money and nothing excluded like the traditional long-term care plan will exclude everything. They'll say, sorry, we're not paying for your gas, your tolls, your car, your utilities, your groceries. But this $12,000 a month plan is cash, $144,000 a year. And you can collect that and not spend your own money, save your money, use their money. Now, how much does this cost? The cost of the plan is usually 3%, 2%, 4% off the benefit you buy. So let's say you buy a million dollar policy with, and you, assuming you, you cannot fix your existing policy or you don't have one. So if you're buying a brand new one, then you can pay two, three, 4%. And each year you're paying two, three, 4%. So let's use a real example. Let's say I'm 60 years old and let's say my cost is 2%. So now it's costing me $20,000. I'm gonna pay $20,000 for a million dollar policy. Now, some people will say, oh, wait a minute, 20,000 is a lot of money. Yes, but let's say by the time I'm 70 years old, I'm 60, by the time I'm 70 years old, I start to have old age symptoms. I get bad back, I start to have stroke, I start to have muscular problems, I have difficulty standing in the shower, I could fall down the stairs, I'm just using an example, it can happen at any age. But over 10 years, I would have paid 2%, 2%, 2%, I would have paid 20%. That means 2% times 10 years is 20%. I would have paid $200,000 over 10 years to the insurance company. Now I have my symptom, I'm 70 years old, I have problems with my health, I call the insurance company, and let's say that happened instantly now. I give 2%, 20,000, Boom, I send it out and next month, after I'm approved in my policy, I get into a car accident. They're gonna send me every month $12,000 tax free. I'm gonna receive $1 million alive while I'm alive, tax free over the next six and a half years. And I only pay $20,000. Now I could have kept that same $20,000 sitting in some investment account the 20,000 can become 21,000. Then I may have to pay tax on that $1,000 interest I earn. So maybe I'll end up with 20,500. 
So I have a choice. If I do nothing and I leave my $20,000 sitting in my investment account, 401k, any place else, it's going to become $20,500 at the end of one year. But if I give $20,000 of it to the insurance company, I'm just using an example. You know, premium could be something different. But that 20,000, I give it to the insurance company. I'm going to receive $1 million as soon as I have old age symptoms. And we know two things for sure. Number one, we're all dying. Number two, most of us are going to die slowly. We're going to get old. We're going to get weaker. And then we're going to die. So death may come 20 years from now. But our health will become weaker maybe now. So why should I not collect $1 million now, starting now while I'm alive, rather than keep 20,000 sitting in some investment account where I have to pay taxes and it's gonna go from 20,000 to 20,500. When I can go and put the same 20,000 with the insurance company. And even if I am healthy for 10 more years, I've given them $200,000. I collect $800,000 of their money Plus, I get back 200000 of my money, which is $1 million tax-free. So these are my summary points to all of you that you know, I wanted to address, that these are things to think about, understanding disability, understanding long-term care options, understanding life insurance. And the most important thing to do is not to take it and put it in some account and, and, and watch it into a drawer and watch it wasted and not maximize the maximum benefit you can get. Always upgrade. One more example I'll use. Many of you had telephones many years ago, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years ago, cell phones. Those phones from back then were so expensive, we were paying 50 cents a minute. I remember my first cell phone bills because I'm in the insurance industry. I was always on the phone it cost me almost $1,000 a month to have my cell phone. Now it costs something like $50 a month. So what I'm saying is always upgrade. Because people are living longer, the premiums have come down. If you stay with your own company, they don't value you. Your own agent is not going to work properly to help you. If they move you to another company, then he'll lose bonuses from his current company. Because if he loses business, the current company will take away bonuses. So your existing agent did not fix it, did not tell you about any of this. I will help you understand it. There's no obligation. Feel free to text me. My cell phone number is 516-924-7999. You can get it from Mukund Bhai um, and he'll send it to you. And we'll be happy to have a phone call with you and explain to you your situation. And then my brokers will help you one-on-one -on -one to shop it and help you compare and help you understand what you have. Thank you. Best wishes. Let me take questions if you have any now. Any question on the question, bhai? Any question why electronic અને આ તૂચો જ રાખજો કે જેથી તમને નોટિસ કરી શકાય તબ બોલો કિશનભાઈ આઈ હેવ અ ક્વેશ્ચન સલીલભાઈ થેન્ક યુ વેરી મચ ફોર યોર ઇન્ફોર્મેટ ઇન્ફોર્મેશન આઈ હેવ જસ્ટ વન ક્વેશ્ચન આઈ એમ 76 યર્સ ઓલ્ડ એન્ડ અનફોર્ચ્યુનેટલી આઈ ડુ નોટ હેવ અ લાઈફ ઇન્સ્યોરન્સ ડુ યુ થિંક ઇટ્સ ધીસ એજ ઇઝ વર્થ વાઇલ ટુ ગેટ અ હોલ લાઈફ ઓર was other one is uh, term life insurance i just leave it alone yeah it's a case by case situation kishan bhai um let's use an example if you leave your money like i just gave the example if you leave your money sitting in your investment accounts and the purpose is for you to enjoy life then it's a good thing leave it where it is but then buy yourself the long-term care kind of plan I'm talking about, the one that sends you $12,000 a month. So it's not whole life. I would not buy whole life. Whole life is very expensive. It's right. a plan that I used to 
sell up until 2006. After 2006, it's not a plan that makes sense for anyone. If you have a whole life policy, you should be exchanging it for the newer plan. If anybody's sending you in your whole life plan today, it's a very high premium, high commission product. The only time whole life makes sense is if you are under 10 years old. Under age 10, the numbers work good. So if it's for the grandchildren who are buying a policy, then it works. But again, make sure you get the right company because agents will tell you their company is the best. And they'll give you a comparison of 20 companies. They'll say, oh, look, we're better than this company, this company, this company. But they won't show you all the companies. Right, right. To hide the companies that are really even better than them. Because an agent, now many agents play the game of saying, I'm independent. But they're really not independent. They're an agent of one company. And then they're selling under doing business as name. Like they'll say, Mehul Incorporated. But they're really an agent of one company, doing business as an agent of one company, and then making it look like they're independent. So make sure it's truly an independent person who's truly looking at all the companies. And so then I your, you get yeah, the money. I got your telephone number, and I definitely will contact you about the long-term care and term. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's important. Kishan, my, my, Kishan if I were you, yeah, one second. One, one more thing for Kishan Bhai. Kishan Bhai, focus on you now. You did enough for your family. You left everything. All those years, you worked hard. You saved money. You put your kids through college. You paid off mortgage. At this point, let's find a way to maximize your dollars to take you to age 100 if you live that long. So it's about you right now and your spouse. To leave your spouse as much money as possible. Your children will take care of themselves. Kishan Bhai, you have a number of people in your report that you have to do with your children, you have to do with your children. Okay. Okay. Sudarshan Bhai. My phone number is Jojo. Thank you very much. Okay. Shobna Ben. Unmute Kardo. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes I can hear you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the informative uh, lectures. Uh, Shalil Bhai, it was very nice to hear, which we didn't have, we never thought about it of getting money back. Uh, still we are alive, you know? And uh, I would definitely contact you. I have a question. Um, I, have a, I had a whole life policy, which I closed down. So it is, I mean, it is staying in my drawers only. So what should I do? I stop paying premium. So yeah. what should I do? Well, uh, first thing is we can check that policy number to see what the status is, if it's closed, meaning canceled, or you're just not paying out of your pocket and it's still alive, the policy. It's alive, yeah, it's alive, yeah. but uh, they have uh, finished it. They said that this money will be uh, given to you when you passed away. Yes, so they're hoping you leave it as is because yeah. they want to keep you at the lower benefit and they mm -hmm. want to hold on to your cash value. And if mm -hmm. you want the cash value, they're going to charge you interest on it. So yeah. there's a way that we can fix it, as I mentioned, that we can shop it. We can take the information of your policy and go to mm -hmm. all the companies and say that what would you do for our client? Mm -hmm. for and they will come back and tell us how they can help, what rider they can give you extra how much extra debt benefit, what better interest rate on your cash value. There would be no tax if you move. So All we right. have to just do shopping. Thank you. Another question is that uh, I have my two daughters having uh, insurance policy with the same company, but uh, because you know they are not up to date, they missed the premium so many and it has filed up so much in the, uh, in the amount. So I don't know how to, how to do that, you know? Yeah, again, we can fix it. So what happens is that if you skip premium, they create loans in the policy. And we can show you how we can raise the loan without repaying the loan. I'm not finishing. Unmute, Karo. Shubhna, unmute, Karo. Yeah. Uh, no, you carry on your question. Yeah, sure. 
yes uh, so lil bhai uh, so the interest uh, the premium has piled up so much so i don't know if i can come i have to divide reading... yeah, hello so yeah i can hear you shobhna uh, yes uh, so if i can uh, contact you regarding that to uh, modify everything and uh, bring it to life bring it to active yes absolutely i can show you again we can shop it with the competitors to see how we can wipe out the loans without mm. repaying the loans because the no, new company no, the project, premium the premium has piled up yeah so but they we can are, we they can, are using they are using the cash value to pay the premium correct correct but we'll show you how to stop them from doing that all right all right and, so and you won't, and and you won't have to pay thank you so much <laughs> that is what i wanted thank you so much and very okay. very good very good uh, uh, to the indo american association this is a brilliant uh, show thank you so much for bringing thank you uh, rama ben uh, jay shri krishna bhai and sarel bhai very informative session was there i have so many question i will meet you in person also sometime but my question about the uh, changing the policy to other person uh, other uh, firm to get a better value or you can have a, your uh, death value taken at that time should i be disabled to have a death value taken per month without any income tax yeah uh, when you exchange a policy from one to the other there is no mm -hmm. income tax as long as okay. you do it the proper way some agents do it the wrong way they make you cancel a policy because they want to make a high commission so if they make you cancel the old policy and sell you a new one you're going to lose that's a losing proposition you don't want to do it that way you want to do uh -huh. it by 35 exchange properly so it becomes a low commission exchange and i'll show you how to do that and you don't have to be disabled when you want to make an exchange but to collect the money you also don't have to be disabled you just have to show the insurance company that you have difficulty with a couple of daily living activities like maybe you have difficulty with bathing safely or going up and down stairs safely disability is not required tabe dekha tha ta amra kya maro aaj bo aave che niranjan bhai ha mano aave che khabar na di padi che લાઈફ ઇન્સ્યુરન્સ એન્ડ ફોર્ટી થાઉઝન્ડ ઇઝ માય કેશ વેલ્યુ વોટ ઇઝ ધન નાઉ આઈ કેન નોટ હિયર યુ yeah you're not getting much benefit out of it because your cash value is almost as high as your debt right. mm -hmm. so they're not giving you anything they're really holding your cash value and taking uh -huh. almost no risk and they're giving you a low interest rate on your money so we have so if I... and uh -huh. get that 40000 moved over so you can take uh -huh. to earn interest on the 40000 and yeah. it continues to grow the cash value but also the debt benefit will be maybe 200000 so you like this more debt benefit and then then if you become ill old age symptoms long term care symptoms then you can collect the 200000 while you're alive instead of collecting the 40000 so in case if i don't change and if i die today so what happens to that case will they give only 50000 or they will give 40 plus 50 to my beneficiaries it depends on the plan if the plan was designed to be a certain fixed that benefit they'll only pay that that benefit if the plan was a combination of cash value plus that benefit they'll pay both so again i can review i can look at it and i can help you understand your specific situation right i will definitely meet you i definitely want to see meet you and in person and we will discuss everything thank you very much for your input my pleasure yes satish bhai ha ji uh can you hear me yeah yes yeah, bhai thank you for 1035 exchange uh <laughs> i'm sure tumhe kida e pramane uh hamari insurance company to aa baat kari nahi ho tumne uh મેં પાંત્રીસ વર્ષ પેલા પચાસ હજારની લીધી હતી સો 
આજે હું એક્સચેન્જ કરું હાઉ મચ આઈ કેન એક્સપેક્ટ we have to shop it we have to go to the market place and say your age we have to tell them how old you are i am 74 yeah no but i can do like over the phone right i have to compare i have to go to the market place i have to get i have to tell every company because we go to every company and i have to go to them and say this is your situation what this is the before and then they'll give me a counter proposal and then we'll show you all the company's counter proposals for you to compare then you'll be able to see whether it's better to stay where you are or better to exchange to a certain company that's how we do it okay so thank you question. my pleasure bija koi de question hoy to ane je question puche ana te be device na chalti ho dhyan ma rakhjo there is lot of uh, um, હેલો ડોક્ટર આરપી પેપર and then not the whole powerpoint presentation between all the, the, the digits that you are talking it just goes you know if you go one plan then second plan the third plan and we are with you maybe one or two plans the third plan we the brain doesn't work so maybe i think the visual one slide will do good that's one thing i i'm also interested for the benefit of the listeners what is your condition do you take as a lump sum consultation or you take every month or with every premium because that is you are in independent independent insurance agent so now you are not waiting for the company so you have to take the commission from the uh, your client so is it a one time consultation like you go to a doctor's office and you will take consultation one time and that's it good good question both your points and yes next time we present we'll create some slides to help you visually as well but on zoom it's difficult because of the small screen to be able to present slides but maybe we'll figure out a different way mr bhai and the team are very technologically sound they'll figure out a way to show powerpoint along with talking but the second question is uh about how we are paid first of all i'm no longer acting as an agent so i would not be your agent or broker i'm semi retired from the business uh, after 42 years and when my father died at 56 and i'm 60 i'm trying to enjoy my life a little more so i do these educational talks so i don't charge anything there's no cost from me to you okay you can call me all you want and i'll help you but how do i get paid Yes. Somebody is going to get paid. So my referral to you will be brokers who are independent that are in my team who will visit with you and they'll be paid only the commission by the insurance company. If you make an exchange, let's say it makes sense for you to go from one company to the other company because you got an excellent offer. Now, if you accept the offer, you gain first and foremost the extra benefit. more debt benefit more riders better cash value not having to pay interest on your withdrawals right that's your benefit the benefit to the broker is going to be the commission only is all we will get from our side just like an agent would have gotten from a company no cost to you now the agent if an agent would have written to at a company they would have gotten a 401k match health insurance retirement we don't get any of that so we lose out on all those extra benefits but we are okay with it because we make it up in volume we know that if we are independent and unbiased 
we're able to go to every company and get you different, different, different. So for one client, it may be this company. For another client, based on their health, it might be another company. So we're picking and choosing what's right for each person and their needs. And then we are paid only the commission part from the company, not from you at all. We make less than an agent would have made at a company. We're okay with that. I no cost to you. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Unmute Karjo, RB, tomorrow mute say you. Yeah, just for a social mute, you are a small kid because we know your father and Kala also. So you are a small kid at that time in Queens. All righty, take care. Thank Very you. nice. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, KM, Abhinder, you unmute Karo. Yeah. Sir, Hello. Um, it was great uh, presentation. Tamaru naam go. Tamaru naam. Aha. Uh Tamaru -huh. naam Kalpana che. Kalpana meeta. And I was writing the phone number. That was five one six seven two six. And what was the last phone number? No, I'll repeat it. It's five one six nine two four. Okay. Seven nine nine nine. Five one six nine twenty four. 79.99. Okay, thank you. I will contact My pleasure. You okay, Kalpana. Nice talking to you. Okay. Vijay, what's your name? No, I don't know. Okay. Is there anybody? This was a great lecture. I really tell you, number of our members got interested and you can rest assured you will be bombarded with some questions from today onwards. So your explanation of life insurance, long-term care, disability was really great. And what alternatives one can go and find out the best deal. Uh, I think that was really great. Uh, Dr. R.P. Kidu, okay, it about a father of Shuk by Kalabin or Kay with the Ubi or Kuchu, Verso de Lukode, uh, Shubayata is signed chapter ma, uh, Bombay ma, Junior Chamber Mata, who North Bombay Junior Chamber Mato, and uh, we had a great activity when we were youngster at that time. And uh, Kalaben also, because of our couple Gnati, we were the members and we used to meet quite often when we had that uh, uh, Mandal active at that time. Anyway, I lost a contract, a contact for some time now. Uh, you say you are 60, but you don't look like 60. So, you know, 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 it's just I'm fortunate that I chose to balance my life. You know, I was lucky. All of you have one disadvantage that I don't have. Your disadvantage is you came with $8 to America and you had the stress and the tension of trying to make good things for your family and your children. So you are affected by that stress. All us children, like my dad who brought me here at age nine and my sister, you know, who came here at uh, also uh, at a young age and all the children, your children, other people's children, we are all blessed that you guys made that sacrifice to come to the United States. And if we look younger, it's because of all of you helping us and giving us a stepping stone. Thank you. That's a very good answer. <laughs> Most uh, I would like to mention, I worked as a licensed banker for about 12 years, and I knew some of the things that you are told. Uh, but the way in which, logically, point by point example express everybody must be thinking Investment ne apni policy on a second look kevita apie and a badane tamari madani jarut parashe. Wonderful uh, way of presentation. Thank you very much. Tam, tam, thank, thank you, thank you much. And also thanks to Apna Sudhir Bhai Neke refer Karyu. Uh, I know that uh, we met a couple of years back at some party and you gave me the card. And uh, uh, you are based in Puerto Rico, right? Yeah, so what I did is by living in Puerto Rico six months a year, I live in Jericho, Long Island, six months a year, and Puerto Rico six months. By, and I, I like Puerto Rico because it's very similar to India. If you visit, come please visit me, and you'll see it just like being in Bombay. You know, the construction is similar, the weather is warm all year long. 
I get to play golf a lot. I get to balance my life. Maybe I can enjoy a little more over here because, you know, I can slow down a little bit. So that's why I came to Puerto Rico. There are certain tax benefits also by doing it this way. But I live in Puerto Rico and I live in New York. I live in both places. Thank you very much. But all my brokers, all my brokers are in New York. They're there, Florida, Illinois, California. That's where the team is. I'm the only one from the team that is choosing to live here six months a year. Great lecture. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank Talk. you again. Thank you, you very made much. me emotional. Thinking about the hardship you all went through. And again, thank you all for being that first generation here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yes, all yes. the best. Yes, संख्या तमाम कार्यक्रमों डॉट ऑफ टाइम बिल्कुल साढ़े दस वागे शुरू कर दिए थे तो प्लीज कीप इट इन माइंड के तमे समय से ज्वाइन था तो वक्त आने पर मजा आए तमे पर कहीं मिस ना करो बीजी वस्तु आजे सांझे सात वागे